Adult acquired flat foot deformity. Management. Soft tissue procedures, osteotomies, and arthrodesis. Adult acquired flat foot deformity, AAFD, comprises a wide spectrum of ligament and tendon failure that may result in significant deformity and disability. It is often associated with posterior tibial tendon deficiency, PTTD, which has been linked to multiple demographic factors, medical comorbidities, and genetic processes. An adult acquired flat foot deformity is classified using stages I through 4. Non operative treatment modalities should always be attempted first and often provide resolution in stages 1 and 2. Stage 2, consisting of a wide range of flexible deformities, is typically treated operatively with a combination of soft tissue procedures and osteotomies. Stage 3, which is characterized by a rigid flat foot, typically warrants triple arthrodesis. Stage 4, where the flat foot deformity involves the ankle joint, is treated with ankle arthrodesis or ankle arthroplasty with or without deltoid ligament reconstruction along with procedures to restore alignment of the foot. There is limited evidence as to the optimal procedure, thus, the surgical indications and techniques continue to be researched. Pathophysiology. The posterior tibial muscle, innervated by the tibial nerve, originates in the deep compartment of the leg from the proximal third of the tibia and adjacent interosseous membrane. Its tendon passes posterior to the ankle's axis of rotation, immediately behind the medial malleolus in a groove supported by the flexor retinaculum, and medial to the subtalar axis, making it a plantar flexor and inverter of the hind foot. It also produces supination of the forefoot and supports the medial longitudinal arch. At the level of the navicular tuberosity, the tendon divides into three parts, the anterior part, which is the largest and inserts on the navicular tuberosity, inferior capsule of the medial navicular cuneiform joint, and inferior aspect of the medial cuneiform. 2. The middle part, which attaches to the middle and lateral cuneiforms and cuboid and bases of the second through fifth metatarsals, and, 3, the posterior part, which inserts on the sustentaculum tali of the calcaneus. The posterior tibial tendon is crucial for effective gait, as its contraction facilitates hind foot inversion, in turn locking the transverse tarsal joints and creating a rigid platform for push-off. This action of the posterior tibial tendon is supplemented by other static structures, including the foot osseous architecture, spring ligament, deltoid ligament, plantar fascia, and talonavicular capsule. Of those, the spring ligament, also known as the plantar calcaneonavicular ligament, has recently gained much interest. Testut and Jacob described two distinct fascicles, an anterior fascicle inserted in the plantar surface of the navicular and a transverse fascicle that blends with the deltoid ligament. Later, Sarafian identified two different ligaments, superamedial and inferior calcaneonavicular ligaments, hence the term the spring ligament complex used by many investigators. Insufficiency of the posterior tibial tendon results in the collapse of the medial arch and excessive valgus deviation of the hind foot. The midfoot becomes abducted at the transverse tarsal joint, with uncovering of the talli head. The vector of pull of the Achilles tendon subsequently becomes lateral to the axis of the subtalar joint and accentuates aversion. Progressive stretching of the medial soft tissue structures further accentuates the hind foot valgus deformity and equinus deformity may ensue because of an Achilles contracture. Multiple intrinsic and extrinsic factors can lead to adult acquired flat foot deformity. Trauma, inflammatory arthropathies, corticosteroid injections, various medical comorbidities, and genetic abnormalities have been described in its development. Holmes and Mann reported on the association of obesity, hypertension, diabetes, trauma, and corticosteroid injections with the development of posterior tibial tendon insufficiency, with 60% of their 67 patients having more than one of these comorbidities. An area of hypervascularity in the posterior tibial tendon beginning 1.5 cm inferior to the medial malleolus and extending 1 cm distally is also thought to contribute to the development of adult acquired flat foot deformity, as this region renders the posterior tibial tendon vulnerable to tendinosis and rupture. Myers et al.
found an association between seronegative arthropathy and posterior tibial tendon insufficiency mainly in younger patients with symptoms of enthesopathy. Matrix metal oproteinase, MMP, polymorphisms, particularly of MMP1 and MMP8, have also been related to posterior tibial tendon tendinopathy. Despite efforts to identify underlying causative factors in patients with adult-acquired matrix metal oproteinase, MMP, polymorphisms, particularly of MMP1 and MMP8, have also been related to posterior tibial tendon tendinopathy. Despite efforts to identify underlying causative factors in patients with adult-acquired flat foot deformity, some patients do not demonstrate any known predisposing factors. Stages of flat foot deformity. Johnson and Strom, 1989. Modified by Myerson, 2007. Management options. Conservative. The first line of management for all stage. Surgical. Conservative treatment. Mild to moderate flexible deformity. Stage 1 and 2A. Supportive semi-rigid molded foot orthoses. Stabilization and control of affected joints. Stretching of the Achilles, gastrocnemius. Strengthening of the posterior tibial tendon. Conservative treatment. Severe correctable deformity. Stage 2B. Rigid slash semi-rigid orthoses. Basic mold made out of polypropylene. Posted at hind foot, forefoot or both, depending on hind foot forefoot relationships evaluated with the subtalar joint in neutral position. Severe correctable deformities not controlled by foot orthoses. Ankle foot orthosis. Hinged. Not hinged, Ritchie brace. Well fitted, custom molded leather and polypropylene orthosis, effective for relieving symptoms. Literature. Nielsen et al. 2011 to 64 patients, stage 1 physio, NSAIDs, orthoses. 87% cases not requiring surgical intervention. Alvarez et al. 2006 to 47 patients, stage half. Physio, stretching exercises, orthoses. 89% satisfied. Surgical treatment. Symptomatic patients not controlled by conservative treatment. Clear progression of the pathology. Duration of conservative treatment. Take look at the surgical treatment algorithm. Take look at the surgical treatment algorithm. If the deformity is flexible consider flexor digitorum longus transfer. And if later hind foot valgus is dominant and consider medial calcaneal displacement osteotomy with ligament repair. Or if forefoot abduction is dominant consider lateral column lengthening. You can do the Evans procedure. And if the ACL contracture has been detected, consider the ACL tendon lengthening. If the deformity is not flexible and degenerative arthritis exists, consider the isolated subtalar arthrodesis or triple arthrodesis. If the fixed forefoot supination and plantar flexion deformity exist, consider medial column fusion. Surgical treatment flexible versus rigid. Tendon repair slash transfer. Tendon lengthening and ligamentous repair. Osteotomies, arthrosis, arthrodesis. Most frequently bone and soft tissue procedures combined. Soft tissue procedures, posterior tibial tendon mildly elongated. Debridement. Detached and reattached with appropriate tension. Augmented with a side to side. FDL tenodesis. Soft tissue procedures. Posterior tibial tendon degenerative or elongated or ruptured. Flexor digitorum longus transfer into navicular. Posterior tibial tendon and flexor digitorum longus like phase tendons. FDL most expendable of all flexors. Soft tissues procedures. Medial structures, assess and repair. Spring ligament. Deltoid ligament. Soft tissues procedures. Achilles tendon lengthening. Gold standard, open lengthening if significant. Flexible deformities. Isolated repair of tendons and ligaments. Insufficient correction of bony malalignment. Loss of primary correction. Calcaneal osteotomies assist adequate mechanical control of deforming forces.
Calcaneal osteotomies assist adequate mechanical control of deforming forces. Arthroisis, limited role for flexible flat feet small series with good short-term outcomes high incidence of sinus tarsi pain. Stage 2a. Treatment of choice. Medializing calcaneal osteotomy plus FDL transfer plus slash TA lengthening. Stage 2b. Treatment of choice. Medializing calcaneal osteotomy plus FDL transfer plus slash TA lengthening. Plus slash lateral column lengthening. CC distraction. Lateral opening wedge osteotomy, Evans. Osteotomy 10 mm from calcaneo cuboid joint. Open wedge, graft, internal fixation combined with medial reconstruction. Rationale. Correction of midfoot abduction and supination. Increases talar head coverage. Decreases lateral fibular impingement. Restricts rotation and further subluxation at talonavicular joint. Controversial, lateral sided pain 45%. Delon et al. 2006. Literature. Myers et al. 129 patients. Stage 2 significant radiographic correction. 91% patient satisfaction. 97% pain relief. 94% improvement of function. 87% improvement in the arch of the foot. 84% patients were able to wear shoes comfortably without shoe modifications or orthotic arch support. Excellent functional outcomes in other studies. Stage 3. Triple arthrodesis. In case of fixed deformities and degenerative joint disease provides a plantigrade and reasonably painless foot. Neutral forefoot. Beware of first tray elevation. First tarso metatarsal fusion or metatarsal osteotomy. Stage 4, pantalar fusion. Example of 68-year-old female, rheumatoid with rigid flat foot and secondary arthrosis ankle joint and hind foot. Treatment, pantalar fusion. Stage 4, alternative option. Triple fusion plus total ankle replacement in selected patients. Summary. Stage 1 conservative. Insoles, rehab, stretching, loss of weight, debridement. Stage 2. Stage 2a, medial displacement calcaneal osteotomy, flexor digitorum longus transfer, tibialis anterior lengthening. Stage 2b, as per 2a plus slash lateral column lengthening. Stage 3. Hind foot arthrodesis with malalignment correction or triple arthrodesis. Stage 4. Pantala fusion take home messages. Soft tissue involvement to be considered, properly managed, and combined with bony procedures. Exceptions are selected, patients with stage I, without flat foot. Osteotomies, mechanical control of the peritale joint complex. Take home messages. Good results at long term for medial calcaneal osteotomy and flexor digitorum longus transfer. Arthrodesis in case of degenerative joint disease or fixed deformities or major instability provides a reasonable painless foot if plantigrade. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit channel.